Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, formerly the Libertarian Counterpoint podcast. Uh, We are coming at you on December 18th, 2020. Given all the COVID craziness uh, and lockdowns, it appears we're no longer the land of the free, home of the brave, but uh, land of the sheep and home of the meek, I guess. But uh, before we get into any of the uh, topics, uh, let's introduce our panel uh, up in our upper left-hand corner, certainly uh, our panel is not the uh, uh, meek or the sheep, and <laughs> we'll get right into that with uh, Leon, the word Brathwaite, uh, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California, and up in our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, who is a mm-hmm. pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today, and uh, well, we're uh just jumping right into more of our craziness from COVID lockdowns and the freedoms and liberties that have been taken away from us. And some of the fallout of that is this uh, sort of eviction crisis that we're having yet. We haven't quite gotten to the point where lots of people have been thrown out of uh, homes, but uh, one of the things I think uh, one of the uh, Federal Reserve uh, branches had noted was that uh, people paying rent with their credit cards has gone up over 70 percent uh, and you know which shows that people are struggling to find ways to pay uh, their rents uh, as credit cards usually aren't the most ideal of ways to pay when you consider the interest that they're probably piling up uh, mm-hmm. on that and um, you know and another aspect of this as well is that uh, you know property rights seem to be you know, kind of a uh, uh, thing of the past, maybe you might say, the way that uh, a lot of uh, government uh, executives are telling people that they literally can't evict people. They're having eviction moratoriums. Uh, some of those are coming to an end, uh, supposedly, uh, here in January and, and uh, February of this uh, 2021. So, um, you know, are we getting ready for a big crisis of people being thrown out or, or people who are landlords just simply not being able to pay because they're not collecting any rent. What do you guys have to think about that? You see, nobody, nobody is really considering the true cause of all these lockdowns. So the government comes along and they lock down the economy. They, all these people are now out of work. Some of them can't pay the rent or some of them struggling to pay the rent. They, go, they, they choose um, they go to their credit card. And then our property, then our property rights become an issue because they could tell people, well, we can't evict anybody if we don't, if we are not paid our rent. We can't evict anybody. Now think about how ridiculous that is. So what are we going to do? If somebody is not paying our rent, what property owners are going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to go to the bank and tell the bank, oh, please forgive us. The bank don't care about that. The bank is going to come and take the property from us. But the government is not considering the cost that they are imposing upon the rest of society because of these lockdowns. The only risk that we are considering is the health risk from the COVID. They are not considering the risk of everything else that is happening to people, to all of our fellow citizens out there. This is craziness beyond crazy. We got to do something about this because we are destroying all our rights, all of it, in the name of COVID. All of it. And uh, another uh, aspect of this that uh, probably deserves its own segment is... uh, just the uh, the historical and now numerous scientific studies uh, showing how ineffective lockdowns are at stopping the virus or slowing it down even, how totally ineffective they are. So uh, that's, that's for another side of it. It's just like uh, Leon says, uh, all this uh, sacrifice uh, of uh, liberties uh, and, and rights uh, pri- private property rights on the altar of this uh, fool's errand trying to slow down or stop, even more foolish, a uh, a virus that is going to do what a virus does. And it's just going to virus. And it's going to go around and become viral. And yeah. there's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, you, you know, you can't even stop it with all these, these baloney nonsensical masks and 
you know, go ahead and wash your hands. You know, the, the last 17 things you touched that you're going to go back and touch again in another uh, 30 minutes uh, are going to be covered with COVID and uh, you're going to re, um, re uh, uh, soil your hands after that. I mean, it's just, it, it's so ludicrous. Uh, and then, um, uh, again, th this, yeah, so what does the future have besides uh, an island of discarded masks floating in the Pacific the size of Connecticut and, and discarded um, um, uh, those uh, uh, bottles of um, hand sanitizer just floating around uh, in the year 2023? Uh, the size of Connecticut. Besides that, there uh, between now and then, um, there is it probably want to live on that floating uh, uh, island uh, because you won't find another place to live because it, you know there's going to be a rash of these bankruptcies related to <clears throat> the shutdowns and, and um, yeah yeah I mean a certain amount of it was going to happen anyway. I mean I personally I don't really well I mean it's it's the whole thing's so nonsensical. I mean, I even say it myself. I, I don't feel like going into a movie theater. Well, what for? I mean, you know, I every day I'm surrounded by people and because I've been fortunate enough not to have lost a single day so far, knock on whatever this stuff is on this table. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I have been fortunate not to have lost a, a single day of work. Um so, you know, why am I afraid of going into a movie theater and uh, sitting around a whole bunch of people? I, I really shouldn't be because it's really it's 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 stupid. Um, I, I don't mind going into Costco and being inside of an enclosed area and standing in right. line with people six feet apart. BFD. Yeah. Uh, who cares about, you know, it, it's it's so completely crazy. And um this virus is going to move around amongst us and until uh, either we've all got herd immunity and, and who cares? It's got a 99% survival rate. So who cares if you well, get it, you know? Exactly. Okay. If I'm on my last legs and I'm going to die anyway, well, you know, it just pushed me over the edge of the cliff. So, okay, yeah. there, there you have it. But um, that's not what we're showing here uh, in, well, now that we know. And, and, and like anything, I, I think you say, who cares? I mean, I guess there's, there's a, oh, I, you know, yeah. there's a, a spectrum, I guess, of, of people with different risk tolerances and for good reason. I mean, you know, some people maybe are, you know, just, just have more susceptibility to, to anything, even the flu, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, if, uh, you yeah. know, if you are, okay. you know, 80 years old and you get the flu, that's, that could be bad news as well. So, uh, but, uh, you know, yes. so certainly mm -hmm. everybody has different risk tolerance, but the real issue is, why are some people uh, risk tolerances trumping everybody else's? You know, why does the fact that one mm. person has a bigger concern, you know, in their life, suddenly everybody else has to miss out on part of their life, you know, which is just a absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I got kids there in, you know, distance learning. They're missing out on a lot of things that are part of just the normal part of growing up, you know, getting out and playing with mm -hmm. your friends and, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, seeing your, your your buddies every day in school and hanging out and things. Like, I mean, that's all a thing of the past. I, you know, I can't imagine. You know, for kids growing up in the elementary school. You know, and in my day and age, we were running around the neighborhood together. You know, mm -hmm. playing toy guns or you know riding our bikes or something. And that's, what yeah, toy that's, guns? That, yeah, oh I mean, God. kids. Toy guns. Oh my wow. God! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you oh, mentioned I, it on this show. You never know. What, uh, they might censor you for that. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, are, are you sure you've never pondered murdering anyone? Just yeah, really, uh, really. <laughs> well, I, I'm probably on Santa's naughty list. I wasn't planning on doing this topic this show, but yeah. you know, Santa recently cracked down on one kid in a shopping mall. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. He asked for a Nerf gun. He asked for a Nerf gun. <laughs> and Santa yeah, actually nerf. wound up being the one with coal in his stocking afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> nerf. He was I've sent home from the mall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah what a world. But, but, so but, yeah, it, I, but it, just, it, i'm gonna finish up leon just just sure. and just say that yeah so i think we're gonna expect to see a rash of bankruptcies and uh 
homelessness just skyrocket out there as as and other uh things related to that of course the suicides we're already seeing it but anyway go ahead yeah. Dan, finish up no, no i was just gonna say the, the big overarching thing here is that the government at all levels think our liberty our individual liberty is expendable it can be used and shaped as they wish and this is a big problem because how are we going to get back to where we were where at least we are really and truly the land of the free and the home of the brave. Are we going to get back there? I don't know. Once government grabs power from us, they never give it back. So I don't know how much we're going to lose when we get back to what we're going to call normal. But we're going to lose something. And we got to be careful about this thing, this thing that we're doing in the name of COVID. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like the government is, and the federal government doesn't have precedence about stuff, stuff similar to this. So if you were a Japanese person in, in, uh, in uh, 1941 and yeah. uh, you were incarcerated and, and uh, forced to give everything up and without a trial, uh, yeah, the Constitution guarantees every everybody uh, – the, uh, that you should uh, be uh, able to uh, face your accusers and have a trial and so on and so forth. But, you know, for uh, a little imagined safety, you know, uh, I don't know how many people were incarcerated without a, a trial, complete families, I mean, little kids, seriously. And so, uh, you know, I mean, they, they did that. Uh, you know, I mean, you have countless, countless examples throughout history of America. It's, it just comes down to, you know, the, the, this all feel good uh, stuff that they, you know, the platitudes that they like to discuss when they're trying to get voted in to the throne. As you know, speaking of, um, you know, people that are, I don't know. Like uh, I, I don't know if we're a bunch of Game of Thrones characters or uh, or what are we? But uh, <laughs> well, if if we're Game of Thrones characters, I think the politicians see us as the the unwashed masses that just yeah, get we're kicked the, into the mud as they ride by on their horses. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the Game of Thrones characters that I uh, attribute myself to. Certainly not an Arya Stark throat slitting, you know, uh, stabbing Arya uh, as much as I'd like to think I was, or, or the hound with the big yeah. axe, you know, stuff like that. You yeah, know, our, our only lines are screaming right before yeah. we, <laughs> we don't get any other dialogue. <laughs> we're, we're the ones that the dragon uh, sets on fire is what we are. Yeah, yeah. We're being set on fire by the dragon of uh, the United, yeah, the governments. Uh, in the, the governments, United yes, at all, at all levels too, yeah. at all levels. Yeah. Yeah. You know, life, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness supposed to mean something in this land, okay? Yeah. And we can't lose that because if we lose that, then we have lost everything. Well, you know, and, and to tell you the truth, to, to go carry back on that that uh, Game of Thrones analogy as well, you know, the funny thing about the Game of Thrones is the, you know, maybe some of these people who are vying the, for the throne have a chance of being a winner or a loser, but the people who are the common people are always the losers in the yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, no and, and about the, that. Yeah, and, and the, the kings and the queens and everybody, they're always saying, well, I will do anything for my people. It's, it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And essentially, that's what all leaders do. I mean, they just think that their job is to make, you know, those poor unwashed masses be able to breathe another day. And without them, they wouldn't be able to. Never mind that they're, you know, they're the ones that are making the, the growing the food that they steal and then they burn it up with a, with the dragons and so on and so on. But the, never mind all that little gory detail. We can't live without the people on the throne. And that's definitely what's going on now. This yeah. God, this guy knew some. Oh, <laughs> cool. well, they're trying. They're trying. They're trying to recall him right now, and I, I I hope they do. But the only problem is that if they if they are yeah. successful in recalling Newsom, what do you think was going to replace Newsom? Exactly. Somebody yeah. else yeah. with the yeah. same BS. Yeah. Well, will we, will will we be out of the frying pan <laughs> into the fire? Who knows? Into the yeah. fire. Exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. But, you know? but I mean, it sends it sends a message that, you know, we won't tolerate this kind of nonsense. True. Right? So, so True. I, I think True. I think it's worthwhile, even if you are correct, the people that are attracted to this this kind of uh throne stuff are the the people like in game of thrones they're they're just a bunch of bloodthirsty uh selfish self-centered um diabolical psychopaths essentially and, and <laughs> narcissists and stuff <laughs> well you know it's, it's funny too uh, you know you know getting on to the uh, you know, we're kind of going on to a whole new set of topics today than what we planned, but getting on to the recall, like you had mentioned, and the uh, the idea that, you know, who knows what, uh, you know, if Newsom will be replaced uh, as Gray Davis was uh, a decade or so ago. Yeah. Uh, what's that? A couple decades ago now? I, I can't remember. Like it, uh, no, no, it was yeah. about a decade ago. So, so okay. Schwarzenegger came in yeah. after, um, after, after Davis. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, and as far as, you know, with... Uh, uh, you know, Davis, and there was just a whole host of people looking to replace him. And, and Trump, or I mean, excuse me, uh, Schwarzenegger was the one who uh, filled that uh, void. But the, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, this this idea that somehow there's a good leader, uh, that this this guy who's going to ride in this white knight that we're going to elect yeah. and all things will be good. And I, I think that's one of the insights that a lot of libertarians get that I think a lot of other people don't get. They, they think that the system's okay. But yeah. it's just that Wrong bad person. guy who got in that, that made yeah. everything, you know, the, yeah. fall apart. But in yeah, reality, but. it's it's the system that is the problem because, you know, you, you, you concentrate all these decisions up at the top. And, and as we're seeing with COVID, I mean, these aren't even our elected bodies that are making the decisions anymore. Right. It's literally executive decisions. They're just yeah. simply saying, hey, you know, safety first. Uh, you know, I, your store is closed. Yours is open. Uh, you know, uh, you can go to the protest, but you can't open your shop. I, you know, I, I, it's just, you can't go to a church, whatever it is, you know, it's whatever their decree is from the top. I can get my hair. You can't get your hair done. I, you know, uh, as we've seen constantly with these people, but the idea sure. that a white knight will ride in and set everything straight in reality, it's the, it's that concentrated, power at the top and all information having to flow through them. It doesn't matter who you put in. They could have good intentions. You're still going to get outcomes that a lot of people are unhappy with. So, well, they uh, always, they always, almost always, I wouldn't say every single time, but almost always, they always start off with these good intentions. And they always talk about how they're fighting for us. Oh, we're fighting for this one. We're fighting for that one. They're always fighting for us, but we never, our lives never get better. Our rights are always destroyed. So that's why whenever you hear a politician says they're fighting for me, I want to throw up. I want to vomit. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, they have their own self-interest like everybody. You know, I, of course I, they I, do. You know, of course and, they do. Yeah. So we'll have uh, these, uh, the majority of, of uh, the legislator in, in legislature. I was just listening to an interview on the, uh, the one Republican guy and a couple of other guys that are in the super minority who uh, pushed the lawsuit uh, that was won in the, the court, uh, one of the Supreme Courts here in California, to, uh, uh, to limit uh, Newsom with what he was trying to do. Okay, so they, they won that. And, uh, but he was saying that these other legislatures, uh, legislators in California, they're just abrogating their responsibility to by but going on vacation, I mean they're they're all they're going home. Hey, COVID, I, I got to You know, I can't go to work, right? Uh, yeah, I can get I, paid, but I can't go to work. I, I can get paid. <laughs> oh, I can get paid big time. Yeah, let let uh, let Tim Everett go uh, move boxes around in an airplane, and uh, you know he can go to work because I sure want my Amazon boxes uh delivered sure. to my front door i certainly yeah. don't want to have to wait for that i don't want to have to wait for it to be trucked i want it flown to my <clears throat> to my front door so uh yeah they they can't um and so so they've just abrogated responsibility and who's willing ready and uh thinks he's able to pick it up is is new scum the scum <laughs> <laughs> One of the pond scum, lower than pond scum, scum sucking, whatever. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I gotta stop.
stop. Stop while us, I'm Please, for Tim, tell us how you feel. Please <laughs> yeah. tell us how you feel. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that's clear is that, you know, from what we've seen, it makes you just want to get up and run away. But one of yeah. the things that I found out recently in a new segment that we're going to do called I Didn't Know They Could Do That, and <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, as far as government is concerned, really? is exit taxes. So apparently, yeah. you know, if you... If you're upset and want to get out of here, just say, okay, game's over. I'm done. You know, uh, then, you know, yeah. I, I just found out recently there's an exit tax in the United States. And uh, it, it really only hits people who have over $2 million in assets. But $2 million nowadays, I mean, just owning a home in California, you're already a quarter of the way there, you know, just, just yeah. with that one asset alone. But, you know, as far as... Um, uh, you know, that, that goes, if you want to leave the United States, you actually have to pay a tax. It's roughly equivalent to about close to 25% of all of your assets just to have the right to give up your, uh, <laughs> your, your right your taxable to, status, to be subjugated, yeah. your right for the yeah. shepherd to get behind <laughs> you and <laughs> <laughs> fondle yeah. you and do whatever he's going to do to have your way with <laughs> you with the sheep. Thing. Yeah, to give yeah. up that right, you got to pay about twenty five percent. It sounds like if it, and, yeah. you know, it's meant to keep the rich people from leaving, which is something that California has recently uh, looked at experimenting with too—a wealth tax and yeah. coming after people if you try to leave. <laughs> they're going to yeah. come after you as well. You guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's it's that invisible barrier, economic barrier, uh, to uh, fence us all into. Um, the land of the free so that we don't leave because they don't yeah. want us, especially the more money we have and, and the more wealth and uh, income they can tax, you know, that's, that's a, a golden uh, goose to them and they don't want to lose it. And so they're going to punish you. And so, yeah, that's, that's not freedom of movement. That's being, being literally punished for trying to escape the, the tyranny of the this high uh, taxation, so on and so forth. Yeah, you know, of course, a lot of places you could go to that's even higher. So we won't talk about that. But uh, I would assume that if you were smart enough to want to escape high taxes, you probably go somewhere that the taxes are lower. And there are plenty of those places too. Sure. But no, you can't do it without paying paying this exit tax. You know, it's like it's like the whole you know that song, the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want. But you could never leave. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So if you, you, want, if you want to leave, it's fine. You could leave. But yeah. the franchise tax board or the IRS, they <laughs> always get to make sure. You can yeah. check out, but they can't leave. You okay? Can you can try, out, but you can't can leave. Never leave. No, that's right. It is like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. Jeez. We that's probably, if, if they knew what they were writing about, um, uh, the Eagles. Uh, that was the Eagles, yeah. right? Yeah. Let me make it sure. It was the Eagles, that. yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I mean, well, a a group, a, a band. I, I'm. Oh, I don't want to get off track here. I'll get <laughs> on track. I, I'll start talking about the Eagles. Okay. Well, well, you know, the Eagles. Uh, you know, prophetically, they also had that that song, "Your Lion Eyes," and they were probably yeah. talking about our political leaders. As yeah. well. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but. But, uh, you know, it's funny, though, because with this whole notion of voting with your feet and then government essentially restricting you from voting with your feet by by yeah. penalizing you from leaving. I mean, we're seeing this internally now quite a bit. You know, a lot of companies trying to leave the New York area, a lot of companies trying to leave the California jurisdiction. Uh, and it's uh, a lot of people as well, you know, wealthier individuals taking off. We've talked about it before on our show. We've interviewed a few people who are. Uh, leaving just because of conditions, but also, you know, I mean, uh, uh, costs and taxes keep going up. I mean, that that the guy, that boob governor Cuomo was, you know, talking about, hey, come on back and I'll buy you lunch or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, people yeah, are nice going to cook you dinner. For they're gonna cook you dinner. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. raising their taxes there at the same time. Yeah. He's telling him to come on back uh, for his yeah, free I'm lunch. Assuming, you know? <laughs> I'm assuming he's going to pay the lunch tab with uh, taxpayer money as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah he'll reach into yeah. your pocket and tell you that he's paying for it with your wallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, it is just about time in our show for the uh, for our knucklehead noise patrol. 
And that's where we uh, sort of wrap up with something kind of goofy that some politician or other celebrity has said. Uh, and, uh, you know, at least leave on a, a high note. So uh, not too long ago or earlier in the year, um, Whoopi Goldberg uh, was on The View. So that's always a rich source of material. For <laughs> <laughs> but, but she was talking about uh, 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 Jill Biden's, uh, uh, Joe Biden's wife, and who's now, I guess, on in line to be the first lady. And um, I guess is uh, on The View after discussing... Uh, potential running mate uh, with ABC correspondent George or uh, John Carl. Uh, she said, "I'm hoping Dr. Jill becomes the Surgeon General. His wife, Joe Biden's wife. Uh, she would never do it. Yeah, but uh, she's a hell of a doctor. Uh, she's an amazing doctor, is what Whoopi said. And he wanted her to be the Surgeon General, but of course." Uh, Jill Biden's doctorate is in education. <laughs> education. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, my, my only thought in this is, you know, they, a lot of people they get their they get their ideas for who they're going to vote for from a lot of this mainstream media stuff. And I mean, when they are so far off the mark that they're yeah. telling you that that you know somebody should be the Surgeon General who doesn't even have a doctorate in medicine, who has a doctorate in education, they're telling you what a wonderful doctor they are. So I mean, she she didn't even just you know say. Hey, I, I like Joe, Joe Biden's wife. She should be appointed to something big. She's actually saying she's a great doctor. I mean, okay. clearly it's just BS. She didn't even, you know, one know thing, what she had her doctor. You know, it's one. It's one thing to forget. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. It's one thing to forget things that happened. It's a hell of a thing to remember things that never occurred. People will have remembered how amazing Jill Biden is of a doctor. She could remember that. Even though it never happened, the woman has a degree in education, and if you look at her dissertation, there are mud errors in it. Okay, and you want to tell me she's going to make this amazing doctor? Wow! Yeah. What amazing! What this is? This, this is unbelievable. Why? Whoopi, you're really good. I have to give you that. You're good. <laughs> I wish I could remember that date with Selma Hayek. That's what I want to yeah. remember. Right there. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, I, I had a few of those myself, quite frankly. <laughs> well, these are the, you know, kind of get back to the exit tax. These are the same people that, that bitch, moan, groan, and complain about how companies are leaving the United States to set up operations there so that they have some uh, solution to this, um, to this kind of taxation and stuff like that. So, you know, they, uh, they tax tax us in all kinds of ways. And then uh, when we try to do legal solutions to uh, alleviate some of that burden, you know, then they're all butt hurt. Uh, oh, you know, isn't that horrible that they do that? These are the same kind of people, the people that that want a, a, a teacher to be the Surgeon General. We <laughs> well, on that note, Tim, uh, you know, on exiting and exit taxes, we're at that point of our show where we have to make an exit. Hopefully the government won't throw an extra tax on us for <laughs> get out of our show, right? <laughs> you stopped your podcast one minute early. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, thanks you all for joining us again for uh, this episode. And uh, you can catch more of our episodes on uh, a libertarian uh, counterpoint, uh, counterpoint .com or Facebook's Libertarian Counterpoint page. And uh, we will see you at the next one. Thanks so much.